Now that we've connected our server to our MongoDB Atlas database, now we need to tell our database about the different types of data that we have in our app, just like we did in type defs. So we're going to go to the models folder and create our first model, which will be called user.js. So we'll need to bring in mongoose in order to create our model. And first of all, we'll create a schema with mongoose's schema constructor. And we're going to put it in a variable called user schema. So we'll say new mongoose.schema. And we're going to declare the different fields and types of data that these fields will contain, just like we did in our object types. So first of all, each piece of user data is going to have a name of type string, and we need to include commas after each field, name of type string, an email of type string, a picture of type string, and we can omit the underscore ID field because it's automatically created by our database whenever we generate a new user entry. So then to create our model itself, we can use mongoose.model, and first we need to pass in the name of the collection that we want to create. We'll call this user collection, and then we need to pass in our instantiated schema, which will be stored in user schema. And then we'll make sure to export the model from the file with module.exports. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have some pin data that we'll be adding to our application. So within type devs, we'll add a new pin object type. Each pin is going to have an underscore ID field of type ID, a created at field of type string for when it was created, title field of type string, content field of type string, an image field of type string, which will just be a URL, the latitude of the pin, and this will be a decimal value. So we'll use the scalar GraphQL type float to represent this. Longitude will also be of type float. We'll connect the author of the pin on the author field, and this will be of type user. So we'll get all of the user data here for whoever created a given pin. And then we'll have an array of comments. So to represent an array, we'll add a set of brackets. And then each comment, each entry within this array, will be of type comment. So each comment is going to have multiple fields. So we'll need to create another object type, type comment, which will have a text field of type string for the text of the comment when it was created with created at, which will be a string. And we'll also get the author of the comment, and that's going to be of type user once again. So now that we've got our pin object type, let's create a model to represent this to our database. We'll create a model called pin.js. Once again, we'll bring in mongoose up at the top. We'll create a new pin schema. It's going to be instantiated within this pin schema variable. We'll use the schema constructor from mongoose, where the title of each pin will be of type string, content of type string, image will be of type string. But for latitude and longitude, a decimal isn't represented as type float. Instead, latitude will be of type number. Longitude will be of type number. And then to get all of the user data for the author who created a given pin, we're going to use a special feature of IDs within MongoDB that allows us to what's known as populate an ID. In order to automatically get all of the user's data, we just have to store on the author field a given user's ID. Now this is a special type of ID called an object ID, but when we call the populate method on a given pin and ask for the author, this author field will be populated, meaning it'll expand from just an ID to all of that user's data. So we'll add an object to the author field to specify both that the type of data that we're storing is going to be an object ID that comes from mongoose.schema.objectID. And then we need to add a ref property, meaning the schema that's going to be referenced when this population takes place. So we're going to populate the ID based off of the user schema. And then for the comments array, we'll add a set of brackets to denote that this will be returned as an array. And then to declare multiple fields, we'll add an object where text will be of type string, created at, instead of being type string, will be of type date. But we'll add 
a set of curly braces here to specify that both the type should be date and that we want to set a default value for the date of the current date, which we get from the method date.now. So we'll get the current date when a new comment is created. And then we're also storing the author of a given comment. And we can use the exact same approach as we did for the other author field, where we store the user's object ID and then populate it according to the user schema by setting ref to user. And then finally, if you recall, we added this created at field to our pin object type. We can get the current date and time that a pin was created by adding another argument to mongoose.schema. So I'll add a comma, add an object, and set timestamps to true. What this will do is whenever a new pin is created in our database, it's going to give us a created at value for when the pin was created and an updated at value if the pin was updated. Then finally, we'll create our new model. We're going to call the collection pin. We'll pass in our instantiated pin schema. And we're going to export our model from this file with module.exports. We'll save everything. Then we'll start up our server if it's not already running. And we should see in the terminal that we're still listening on localhost 4000 and our database is connected with no errors.